horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you still there? When gold was discovered in the hills north of Snake River, men headed there from all parts of the West. Prospectors built flimsy cabins in the hills and near the river's banks, and the settlement was called Orville. At the extreme end of the main street, a shack had been built by young Tom Spencer and his wife Ruth. This was the newspaper that Tom Spencer called the Orville Sentinel. And the Sentinel, together with its owner, became an object for ridicule by the lawless element. <laughs> Red Esty, the cafe owner, laughed as he talked to his two crooked cohorts, Oak Wetzel and Pug Vernon, both of whom had arrived in Orville that day. Hey, imagine. These people start a paper in a town where maybe five or six people will bother to read. Row with Orville, the paper says. Hey, what a laugh. We don't have a bank or a school or even a law officer. This young whippers... Hey, wait, Red. You said they have no lawmen here? That's right, Oki. It's why I sent for you and Pug. This sounds good. It's going to be good. Most of the men you see around the cafe are my boys. When things really begin to boom, they'll be in the spot to take over the suckers that come here. Leave it to you, Red, to look into future things. Yeah, but here's why I want you to. A lot of these prospectors in the hills have hit it rich. They don't have time to come to town. All they do is stash their gold away. Now I want you boys to get as much of that gold as possible. It'll be easy. During the next few months, more and more prospectors poured into the hills around Orville. And with their coming, lawlessness increased. The greatest losses were suffered by the prospectors who were robbed of their hard-earned gold by two men who attacked them in their lonely cabins or at their diggings. Tom Spencer, young editor of the Orville Sentinel, poured out indignant columns in his newspapers. But as he said to his wife Ruth and his neighbor, Dr. Niles Ross... What good does it do getting indignant? No one reads my paper, except perhaps the crooks I write about and complain about. They do it to laugh. Oh, that's not true, Tom. A great many people read the Sentinel. Your wife's right, Tom. Don't get discouraged. You wrote to Marshal Millen down at Grand City, didn't you? Yes, I asked him to suggest some man who'd take the job as sheriff. A good man who'll clean out places like Estes. And who'll put an end to robbery and mayhem. Well, the Marshal will find the man, Tom. Be sure of that. I hope so. 
Something must be done, and we can't wait longer. At that moment, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were riding in the hills toward the scene of the gold strike. The masked man's thoughts were the same as those of Tom Spencer and Dr. Ross. Tonto, Orville will become the most lawless community in the West unless steps are taken soon. Ah, stories we hear. Not good. Wherever there's gold, you'll find crooks. And until Orville sets up a law enforcing office, it'll be our duty to go after those crooks. Ah. If we move a little faster, Tonto, we'll be able to make the outskirts of Orville by midnight. Come on, Silver! Late that afternoon, Red Esty met with Oak Wetzel and Pug Vernon in his office at the rear of the cafe. Boys, I received some news today that knocked me right out of my saddle. What kind of news, Red? You know that bunch of Chinese that set up diggings on the north side of the hill? Oh, sure. They have a bunch of cabins down by the river. What an outfit they are. Yeah. They've dug more gold than anybody else around these parts. Huh? Why, you crazy, Red. What do they know about gold mining? They know how to work. That seems to be the answer. Ed Lansing, down at the general store, took them out a lot of provisions. He got to uh, talking with one talking. of them. Talking? Yeah, according to Jed, one of them speaks English. A fellow by the name of Lum. Sue Lum, he's called. He must be the one I saw down at the Spencer's newspaper office. This must be. He's the one that does all the talking and all the business for him. And he's the one who stashes away all the gold they dug. Jed Lansing told me. Hey, they don't carry guns either, do they? No, they're against that. <laughs> so you see how it is. You want us to get their gold? Yes. Their colony is set off by itself out near the river. Sue Lum's cabin is the last one nearest to the water. Take your horses tonight and ride out there along the shoreline. Leave your horses in that scrub brush along the water. <laughs> It was after midnight when Oak Wetzel and Pug Vernon dismounted and left their horses waiting in the underbrush that skirted the river. Then assured that there was no one acting as guard in the Chinese colony, the men began to approach the row of tumble-down shacks a short distance away. Come on, Pug. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto drew rain in the hills. They dismounted and prepared to camp for the night. The moon was full and the masked man walked to a spot where he could see the river below. As he watched, he saw two figures emerge from the brush at the river's edge and begin to slink in a furtive manner toward a cabin. Tonto, come here. Now, look down there. See those men? They seem to be up to no good. Mm. Then sneak up to cabin. And look, Kimazadi. See man on the outside. Yes, he holds a gun. Tonto, we're going down there. Kimasabi. Yes. We ride there, them here horses, and get away before we reach them. I realize that. We'll leave our horses here and go down on foot. We'll try to take them by surprise. Let's go. A short time later, the masked man and the Indian, after making their way down from the hills, approached the row of cabins where they had seen the two men. Then they heard two shots from the cabin nearest the river. At almost the same moment, the cabin door opened and two men rushed out and ran toward the river. Otto, those are the two we saw. They're carrying bags and they must have fired those shots. Come on, after them. Uh-huh. The two crooks were more than 50 yards away and their horses were but a short distance from Sue Lum's cabin. They were astride their horses when the Lone Ranger and Toto, guns drawn, ran past Sue Lum's cabin. They paid no attention to the Chinese men who ran from the cabin shouting. Instead, the Lone Ranger called to Toto. Toto, shoot her, they'll get away. I winged one of them. He dropped his bag. Uh, let him get away. Yes, they're both getting away. Too bad we didn't ride our horses. Then ride to town. Yes. Perhaps they'll cross the river farther downstream and ride to Grand City. But it looks now as if they're heading for Orville. We get horses right after them? Yes. But first, let's recover that bag the one man dropped and return to those men up at the cabin. The old ranger picked up the heavy loaded bag and brought it back to the cabin where a group of aroused Chinese were gathered around Su Lum. They parted when the masked man and Indian appeared. The actions of the Lone Ranger had made the Orientals place immediate trust in him, and Su Lum told of the robbery. Crook fellas have cut on a face. 
No see face. Did they hide their faces with handkerchiefs? Yes, all same wear like you say. Take gold. Shoot Chinese fella on tongue. When on tongue, him make a fight. Me try make a fight. Crook fella hit me on head with a gun. Me fall down. When me get up, crook fella shoot gun, run away. So that's it. They stole your gold. Steal some. They can't be allowed to escape, Sulam. As soon as I've treated the wound of your friend, On Tong, Toto and I are going after them. After the Lone Ranger had treated the wounded Chinese, he and Toto returned to their camp for their horses. Easy, city, big fellow. Come on, fill Soon they were galloping along the riverbank, heading in the direction the crooks had taken. Oak Wetzel was the crook who had been shot by the Lone Ranger. He and Pug Vernon, after doubling back to Orville, had gone at once to Red Estes' office, entering the cafe by a rear door. After leaving the single bag of gold on the table, Vernon joined Red Esty in treating Wetzel's wounds. Esty completed the job. Yeah. That'll keep you going till Doc Ross opens up in the morning. You can go to him, Lan, and give him some trumped-up story about how you got shot. Yeah, thanks, Red. I'll do that. Now, let's hear what happened to you. How come you got shot and only have one bag of gold? We're lucky we got that. That's right. Tell them, Pug. Those Chinese had no guards outside their cabins because most of them must sleep in Su Lum's shack, guarding the gold there. Must have been 15 of them when we broke in here. Like finding yourself in a hornet's nest. They woke up and tried to keep us from the bags of gold. We slugged a few and shot one fellow, I'm sure. Then we grabbed the two first bags of gold we could get our hands on and made a run for it. Guns are no guns. We couldn't stand off 15 Chinese. They started to go crazy. Sure seemed to have a lot of gold in the shack. But Red, it'd take more than two men to get at it the way they look after it. All right. So you only got two bags of gold. I see only one. Where's the other? The crooks told Red Esty about their pursuit by the Lone Ranger and Toto. Oak ended. One of them shot me just as I got on my horse. The gold bag fell to the ground. I couldn't get off and pick it up. That's right, he couldn't. They were getting near. Besides, our shots were getting too close. Why didn't you shoot it out with them? They were behind us when we were running for the horses. When Oak got himself shot... I'm sorry about losing that other bag, Red. That's a part I don't like. You say they have a load of gold in Sue Lum's cabin? The most I ever saw. Bags of it. Then we're going back after that gold. All of it, you. All of it? When? Now, before the night's over. Oh, Red, you're crazy. We couldn't manage That's it. That's what you think. I have different ideas. Those Chinese don't have guns. You sure of that? Yeah, we made sure. But they have gold. And I have a lot of men. And all my men in the cafe have guns. We don't have to worry about that masked fellow you saw. If he's still out with the Chinese, we'll kill him too if we must. Now, wait, Red. I, I don't get this. What are you planning? I told you. To get the Chinese gold. We're going to work up my men so they'll use their guns. We're taking every man in that cafe. We're going out to where those slant eyes are. Now, what about the men outside who aren't in your gang? Whatever the crowd will do, they'll do. You and Oak go into the cafe and start an indignation meeting. I'll tell you what to say. You just speak hot and loud. I know how mobs act. When you're finished... They'll want to kill every Chinese this side of San Francisco. <laughs> Boys, this could be bigger than an Indian massacre. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now, 
Call to continue. The Lone Ranger and Toto, following the crook's trail, arrived at the end of the short main street that ran through Orville. <laughs> they dismounted and left their horses in a grove of trees. The masked man noticed a light burning inside the last shack in the settlement. The moonlight revealed the sign above the front door. The Orville Sentinel. Toto, the young fellow who publishes that paper, Tom Spencer, is going to become an important man in the West. Ah. You say him have good newspaper. Yes, he does. Perhaps we'll visit him before we leave. Uh, what you do now, Kimasabi? The only horses I see are at the hitching post in front of that building at the other end of the street. It must be the cafe. Uh, we go there and look for crooks? Yes. we we'll walk to the rear of these buildings until we get there. And I'll decide what action to take. <laughs> Cafe, all right. Uh, you see, Kimasabi. Window at back. Open. Yes. Let's go there. Perhaps we'll be able to look over that place without being seen. All right, quiet down now. I got nothing to tell you. We can see quiet. inside from here, Taro. Oh, what's this? Mm. Everybody there together. Big crowd, one place. There's a man standing on the bar asking for silence. And Taro, there's another man who's been lifted up beside him. See? His arm is bandaged. It's in a sling. Ah, maybe him man you shoot at river. Yes, perhaps it is. Inside the cafe, Red Esty stood to the rear of the crowd that had gathered around the bar at the raucous request of Pug Vernon. Vernon stood atop the bar, and Oak Wessel stood beside him. Finally, the noise subsided, and Pug began to speak. Men, we all know what a big menace those Chinese out on the river become. You probably heard how they've been jumping claims and stealing gold. Now they plan to murder us. They're plotting right now to kill every white man in the hills and along the river. You don't know that show, Pug. I don't know. Pug knows. He tried to kill me, but uh, they got away. I was shot tonight and left for dead. While I made believe I was dead, I heard those yellow men plot. They're going to march into town tomorrow afternoon. Loaded with guns. The Lone Ranger was serious as he backed away from the window of the cafe. Otto, those men are liars. They know as we know the Chinese here and around Orville are hard workers and peaceful. They don't even carry guns for protection. Uh, me no, King Fai. I'm convinced those men who were speaking are the two we chased tonight. That's what me think. He got bandage an arm. Him make up story how Chinese shoot him. I think their plan is to use a mob as a front. They really intend to go back and steal the money they couldn't get earlier tonight. We must stop this mob from leaving Orville for the Chinese colony. Toto, uh -huh. ride out there at once. Tell Su Lum what's happening here. Have him hide his friends in the money. Then cross the river and ride to Grand City. You want me to get Marshal there? Yes, Marshal Millen is a good officer. And he knows we've helped him in the past. Ask him to enlist a posse and get here as soon as possible. Me go, Kimasabi. Take shortcut to Grand City. Good. I'm going to the newspaper office. I hope Tom Spencer will be able to help me. Tonto rode off for the Chinese colony, and the Lone Ranger hurried to the office of the Orville Sentinel. When he entered the one-room building, he saw a man and woman intent on writing at a large desk. They dropped their pencils on the table and leaped to their feet in alarm when they saw the masked man. Who are you? What do you want? Well, please don't be alarmed. I have reasons for wearing this mask, but I haven't time to explain them now. Are you Tom Spencer? Yes. What do you want? Your help, Spencer. Your help and the help of any decent man in or near Orville. Unless we act, there might be a mass murder tonight. Oh, no. What are you talking about? The Lone Ranger told of the mob being formed at Red Estes Cafe and concluded... And though my friend Tonto has gone to warn them, they still may not be safe. You're right. Unless we do something now, no one will be safe in the future. They use prejudice to rob the Chinese now and perhaps to murder them. Later on, they'll use the same tactic to rob other people, regardless of race. That's usually the way. But we haven't time to discuss reasons and possibilities. What we want now are a few good men who will not be afraid to use guns against a mob. Tom, Dr. Ross will help. Sure he will. Dr. Ross's office is only a short distance from here. There's also Jed Lansing and his son, Ed. They sleep in back of the general store. I'll ride up into the hills and get the prospect as we know to be on our side. I'll go right now. Get the men you mentioned, Spencer. Have them come here. I'll hurry back to the cafe and see what's happening there. When the Lone Ranger reached the rear of the cafe a few minutes later, he could hear Oak Wetzel still haranguing the mob in the cafe. 
Inside the cafe, Wetzel stood alone atop the bar, talking to the men who'd heard his tirade. So you follow me there, boys, and get rid of those murdering Chinese? Yes, we I get my gun, and I gotta get mine, too. All right, then. Get your guns, everybody. Take ropes, too. We may need them. We'll start off from here in a few minutes. We want to get this thing over before dawn. Now, it's either us or the Chinese, and we don't want it to be us. <laughs> Then the Lone Ranger's attention was diverted to another window, this one revealing the interior of Red Esty's office. Esty was inside talking with Pug Vernon. Cautiously, the Lone Ranger walked to the door that was a rear exit from the office. There, he placed his ear against a crack in the door and listened. And in his office, Red Esty hefted the bag of stolen gold and talked to Pug Vernon at the same time. You did a good job, Pug. You and Oak. Let him lead the mob out to the river. We'll ride behind and be ready to move in on the money shack once the mob takes over and chases the Chinese into the hill. Yeah, I know where the money's kept. Too bad we didn't have more men with us before. We can have made off with a whole pile of bags. We'll get it all this time, Pug. Don't worry. You made a lot of money, Red, from the jobs Oak and I have been doing around Orville. You haven't done too bad yourselves. You'll be rich with your cut from the Chinese gold. Are you going to give us our split on everything, then? Yeah. And don't always be worrying about that money I owe you. Everything you've stolen is right over there in that big safe. The marshal for Grand City will be glad to know that. Hey, what did you get in? You're covered, both of you. Move and I'll shoot. Uh, Take it easy, stranger. We're not moving. What's the play? I'll take your guns, Esty. And I'll tell you. Well, do you have my gun? Yes. Now, yours, Pug. uh, That's it. Red, the boys are starting off. I hear them. So do I. Quickly, out the rear door. Both of you. What for? Move, I say. I'll use this gun if you don't. Uh, do what he says, Pug. All right. We're moving. Now that we're out here, walk fast before that mob out front forms. We're going to the Sentinel office. Faster. Oh. Yeah. The Lone Ranger pushed Red Esty and Pug Vernon into the office. Get in there. Where Tom Spencer stood with Dr. Ross and Jed and Ed Lansing. All men carried guns. Lock them in that closet over there. I'll right. explain later. Right. The mob's forming. It'll pass you any minute. Have your guns ready and let me handle this. Right. All right. Red Esty and Pug Vernon were shoved into the closet without question. And the heavy door that could not be broken was locked behind them. Then the four men stepped outside into the night. Guns ready. Stay in the shadows, all of you. They'll have to march in the direct light of that full moon. Look, here they come now. Ready, Doctor? Yeah, with two guns. What about you, Jed and Ed? We're with you. Don't worry. Yeah, not expect this. Now, be at ease passing here. Remember that. You also remember that all mobs are cowardly. Oak Wetzel walked slightly in front of the mob as it paraded along the moonlit street past the office of the Orville Sentinel. Suddenly, there was an outburst of shots above his head and that of the crowd. All right. Stop right there, all of you. Hey, what? The masked man, boys, get him. Leave your guns alone. You're covered from all sides. I don't believe it. I'll show you. Three men had reached for their guns, and three shots from the darkness near the building had shattered their gun hands. Now, does anyone else want a bullet? Get your hands up, all of you. Hi. Now spread out in single file and face the other direction. I mean it. The next shot may hit a target. The mob had become a mass of unbelieving and shaking men. They had no idea how many guns were played on them from the shadows. And they saw a masked man whose flashing eyes compelled attention, even as did his fast-shooting gun. They obeyed his commands immediately. All right, Spencer. Will you and Dr. Ross please walk in back of those men and remove their guns from pockets and holsters? Certainly. Come on, Doctor. I'm with you. You men in the mob, you'll stay just as you are until you've been relieved of your guns. Then you'll turn... Walk to the front of the building and place yourselves flat against it. Backs turn. Any of you attempt to move, you'll be shot. You men, come this way. When Tonto led Marshal Millen and his posse into Orville at dawn, a strange sight met his eyes. In front of the Orville Sentinel, a crowd of men were standing with their faces to the wall of the building, with their hands held high against it. Four men holding guns ready stood behind them, and the masked man was speaking. Those of you who were let into this mob by the lies of Oak Wetzel and Hug Vernon must know by now how wrong you were. 
You heard me force him to admit the truth of what I heard Vernon and Red Esty discuss in Esty's office. They're the ones who've been robbing the prospectors. Yeah, are you sure of that? Marshal Millen. I'm glad Toto found you and that you've arrived. Who are these men you have tied up? Most of the men back there are members of Red Esty's gang. They're either crooks or card sharps. The rest of the mob was either ignorant or befuddled. They've had their eyes open these past few hours, Marshal. The masked man spoke to them of tolerance. Tolerance? Yes, of another man's race and beliefs. These crooks, Esty, Wetzel, and Vernon, had the mob attacking the Chinese merely because they were Chinese. Spencer will tell you the entire story later, Marshal. I uh, thought you might want to know that the loot from most of the robberies around Orville is in a large safe in Esty's office. I see. These men are witness to confessions Wetzel and Vernon made while we waited for you and your posse. You'll have no trouble sending them to prison. Thanks. But I'll leave that part to the new sheriff I brought with me in response to a letter from Tom Spencer. Then everything is under the best control now. Otto, you and I aren't needed any longer. The good people of Orville have a great future ahead of them. Good luck with your paper, Spencer. Good luck to you. And thanks. Thanks for everything. Well, he's a great man, that one. I'm sure the Chinese out on Snake River will be grateful when they hear what he did for them. He's done a great deal for everyone, everywhere. I happen to know much that he's done in the past. Ruth, you hear that? Come on outside here. Marshal Miller knows all about the masked man. Oh, I'm so glad things have turned out like this. Marshal, is that true about the masked man? You know him? Only as the rest of you do. How you know him now? A stranger doing good for all. You see, he's the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 